Okay, so this was a video I shot just before the lockdown and I've not released it because I haven't got my film back and I probably won't be getting it back for some time. But I thought I'd release the video anyway without the photos, but I'll show some photos taken from a completely different location, but shot with the same camera. So which camera is that? Well, it's this one, the Nikon F. Oh yes, you've asked for it, Howard, and here it is. Let's go. There are nice cameras. Some are even excellent. This camera, the Nikon F, is an absolute legend. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to for creating your own slick looking website or online store. Anyway, here we are in the Windsor Massive. Check this fine town out. It's so posh. Let's go check out the streets to see what we're going to shoot. But why have we come to Windsor? Because full of tourists. That it'll be jam-packed full of people. Yeah, I wasn't exactly spoiled for choice. Even pre-lockdown, it wasn't exactly rich pickings for human subjects. If there's nothing going on the street to take photos of, just pose. Great Karen to pose with because it looks the absolute dog's bees. Good design never grows old. It may be 61 years old now, but it still looks fresh. When I first started learning photography with film cameras way back in 2001, my Grail camera was not a Leica, it wasn't a Hasselblad, it was the Nikon F. There are plenty of people that wax lyrical about Leica M, Hasselblad V, not so much the Nikon F, but this is every bit as iconic as those two. It's so sharp looking, arguably Nikon's best looking camera ever. It looks stunning in chrome and black, so I had to buy both of them, of course. As they say, if you can't decide, buy both. Well, okay, nobody says that, it's just me justifying my purchases. But anyway, chrome looks classic, black, well, the Nikon F is made of brass, so you get some nice, glorious, wabby-sabby, that's not the stuff you put on sushi, brassing on the edges when the paint starts to wear off. Of course, part of the appeal was purely aesthetic, but a major part was the fascination of how a camera could operate without batteries, a purely mechanical machine. It's not much to go wrong, it's all mechanical. There's no light meter, which is why I'm using an external light meter. So here I have got my light meter, Voigtlander, VC meter two. So you just put the ISO, your aperture, and then you move the shutter speed to match that green dot. Or you can just set the shutter speed and then do whatever. Pretty simple to, to explain that. Yeah, I, I failed to explain it. <laughs> so the Voigtlander meter is meant for hot slash cold shoe use. It's the most rudimentary basic light meter there is. And that's why I love it. If you don't know about the frigging exposure triangle, this makes it so easy to comprehend. What you do is you set your ISO here and then you just balance your shutter speed and your aperture setting until the green light shows. Simple. Shutter speed dial lever thing which is a nice nice to have your thumb on when you're waiting for a shot to just kind of flick it flick it about i still haven't figured out what this this lever does but and then this button again still haven't figured out which what that button does but it looks looks pretty cool it's a cool looking button only kidding. With mechanical cameras, there's something so alluring about how pure and minimalistic things are. It makes you realise that you don't need much more than just that to take good photos with. The rest is up to you and how amazingly well built these things are. In my opinion, it doesn't have the same rock solid over engineered feel that Leica Lever might have, but these were built to incredibly high tolerances. And let's not forget the Nikon F was all assembled by hand. Now the advanced leave on my Chrome version does have a little bit of play, but look, as long as it's not falling off, then that doesn't really matter, does it? Now when you first get one of these, you might think, oh, leave is a little bit sticky. That is actually in its locking position, so you don't accidentally wind the film when you're getting it in and out of your bag. And that's ready to advance, ready to shoot. So it's a single stroke. Make sure it's on A for advance, R is for rewind. Wind it and you're ready to shoot. To maintain the tourism around here, nobody will ever know. Yeah, anyway, I mean, you can hear pin drop in this alley. You can also hear this clacking away. 
the early versions, I haven't got an early version, this is the serial number starts with seven, the early versions, 6.4, and they have a cloth shutter. This has a titanium shutter, which is pretty clacky, but it's a nice solid clack as your finger presses that shutter button. The cloth shutter F will be quite hard to find and it will probably cost you a fair bit. If you really need a cloth shutter, just get a Leica. It'll be interesting to find out how many shots these cameras at 60 years old have taken. But still, even after so many years and however many shots it's taken, it's still working so solidly today. But they're built to last. I mean, Don McCullen was said to have been saved by a Nikon F from a stray AK-47 round. I'm sure it wasn't a direct hit, but the point is that he had a bullet-shaped dent in his camera that would have otherwise ended up in his torso. Of course, you're not going to be finding too many bullet-dented Fs cropping up on the internet, but most will have lived a hard life. They were meant for working photographers. Finding a minty is going to be very rare. Talking about rare, Oh, proper mint. <laughs> Original box. Mint doesn't even do this camera justice. Look at the bottom of that, the paint. All well, the paint's intact. A camera in this condition is as rare as rocking horse poo. If you're a collector, you don't need to think twice about buying a Mint EF like that. If you just want to get one to shoot with, it doesn't matter if it's a bit beaten up. In fact, it will look cool if it's a bit beaten up. The regular non-rare Fs haven't really changed much in price over the last 10 years. Don't think of this camera as an investment piece. Buy it for a good price, use it. If you don't like it, sell it. You'll probably make most of your money back. The things you do need to look out for there are the slower shutter speeds and the faster shutter speeds. Those are the ones that usually go out of whack first. And these are available with a number of different prisms and focusing screens. And that was one of the appeals of the F. It might not have been the first SLR ever, but it was said to be the first SLR system camera. And this camera alone almost killed off the Leica M. Nikon was the innovator, the original, the badass. The use of your DSLRs today, the mirrored cameras, was all started with this. The granddaddy. This was like the mirrorless camera of its day, if you get what I mean. This was the game changer. This was the camera that changed trends from rangefinders to SLRs. In fact, this is probably thinner than a mirrorless camera. Check that out. That's modern day Nikon Z6 right up there with its granddaddy. I mean, check out the body. It's actually thinner than the Z6. The D780. I mean, if you check that little icon there, that's actually where the sensor is. Yeah, that's the position of the sensor. So behind the sensor, there's all circuit boards, a screen, wires, whatever. Still, check out how thin the F was. The Nikon F was first for many things. First motorized SLR at 4 FPS. Wow, 100% finder, mirror lockup, lots of lenses on release, and as I said before, a choice of different prisms. In some ways, it doesn't matter which one you go for, although I'd least recommend the waist level finder. The best option is the eye level finder, the most iconic look of the Nikon F and any film SLR, which means they also hold their value well. Unfortunately, as collectors tend to go for the standard prism, they're increasingly harder to find in a good condition. So what exactly do you need to look out for? Well, obviously dents, but the silvering of the mirror inside the prism. That's when the reflective bits start coming off. Actually, all the photos in this video, I've never published them, bothered to do anything with them because they were either not interesting for me, test shots, or out of focus, but I find it quite cool actually to sometimes look at those photos that have been locked away for so many years, even the ones that I didn't like at the time. With lenses, it's F-mount, so we'll take all the lenses from the good old days up to today. It's just that you can't control the aperture on the modern G lenses, but you can mount lenses that you couldn't from the F-re onwards, which are a couple of you eagle-eyed film nuts spotted. Thinking, I'm going for that. I wasn't even thinking that I'd buy anything today, but I've got to have it. Look at that. That's a very special wide angle lens, 2.1 centimeter, f4, Nikkor O. It, it, sticks, it sticks right into your camera like that. This is meant for the Nikon F. So you have to have the mirror lock up because otherwise the mirror is kind of in the way. And you can only use this on the Nikon F and F2. And you probably think that's weird. A wide angle 21mm would probably stick out quite a bit, but because it sticks in that way, it's quite flat. It's like a pancake. They, they don't call it a pancake lens. It should be a pancake though, and that's very pancake-ified. 
It's essentially a rangefinder lens. It's not the sharpest 21 mm round, it's decent enough. I mainly got it because it's such a great lens to collect. It's so freaking badass, which I see nothing wrong with. I mean, look, you're shooting with a film camera in 2020. Things don't have to make sense, right? And then there's not much to hold on to. It's, it's a very slim ring, but it still clicks in. The, the apertures still click nicely. F4 maximum aperture. And then that's your focusing. Everything should be in focus, in theory. And because you have to lock up the mirror, which you do by adjusting that bit on the side, chafing like most of your skin off. Mirror locked up, you have to have a viewfinder here because you can't use the prism, pentaprism. There's a switch here, see the top yeah. to the red, so drop. So this is up position, so press and turn down. Now you fire, you see, red, that's it, so it's released. So to lock it, you obviously, it's not electronically driven, you have to fire it, then it stays in place. Yeah. yeah. That's so cute. It's a beauty. Once you've got your light meter reading, the process is so simple. There's not much else to it. And that's the beauty of a camera like this. If you're really worried about having no automation to help get that perfect exposure, there's plenty of other cameras. But for that pure SLR photography experience, the feeling of being the one in complete control and using a camera that you enjoy using and owning, the Nikon F was not just the first SLR system camera, but perhaps the best there ever was. They are built like tanks, but unless a seller says that it has been CLA'd, cleaned, lubricated, adjusted, do budget for one of those because maintaining it well will probably keep it running for another 60 years. This is one of the most important cameras in the history of photography and the best way to pay it respect is to keep using it for what it's good at. And that's not being displayed on a shelf somewhere. Here's a quick 20 second sponsored message. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to set up your own domain, online retail space or website, it's super simple to get started and make your next move with Squarespace. With an easy to use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24 seven customer service. You can try it out with a 14 day free trial and get 10% off your first order with this link and discount code. It's a nice street. It's all street here. Perfect for street photography. Probably, probably marble. This is, this is, this is, no, no Faisal. This is rustic marble. That's what it is. For lenses, lenses and flanges. Flangetastic. Harry Megan's toilet cleaner. Just over there, going to the job centre. The Royal Toilet Cleaner. I mean, how, how do you go from there? I mean, when you go to the job centre and they ask, oh, what, uh, what's on your CV? I, I, I cleaned royal toilet, you know, that, which was made of gold and diamonds. How do you go from that to something else? Now I'm coming. I, I bet the Queen's going to come to the shop and just scrub out all the HRHs on every single postcard. Can I just say, that guy back there was reading Tractor Monthly. I don't... My mind is blown. <laughs> I didn't know such a magazine existed. See, see the Windsors, they travel on Hogwarts Express. Even the McDonald's is posh. Look at that, they've got a doorman. They must do really posh Big Macs there. Mm, made out of poor people or something. A quarter pound of poor people. That's a dog in that trolley, by the way. What? Yeah. What's going on there? The claw.